people. Speaking of Vegas, Mark's going to be there, right? Mark's going to be there. The man with the best hair in the insurance business, the best shoe game in the country, right? Mark Mercer, y'all, he is a fantastic, fantastic resource. Mark is also a CWC coach. You might not be aware. He works with a dozen or so agencies directly, coaching their owners and some of their teams. So if you were interested in working with Mark, you can learn more at craigwigginscoaching.com slash Mark. But Mark runs one of the most successful, fastest growing agencies in the country. You are all in for such a treat today. So with that said, Mark, thank you for your time today, man. Thank you for all that you do for your CWC members and what you're doing for all these thousands of people that will end up watching this recording as time goes on. Thanks, man. Take it away, hey, buddy. I tell you what, it's a hell of an intro, man. I, I, I hope I'm as impressive as you made me sound. I don't know about that. Um, hey, guys. So I'm going to kind of dive into it. those that know me. I'm, I'm going to get right at it so we can all start learning and kind of hopefully if this hopefully next 45 minutes, we, you guys pick up one or two things that would be a win for me. So one call close. I'm just going to kind of give you a little background on why we do it. The last couple of years, I think in this business, the biggest change I've seen is it's much more difficult for us to get hold of consumers with do not call, with spam, with every, I mean, there was a day that you can put 200 names in a dialer and you'd get 200 people to answer the call. Now they may not all say yes, but they'd at least take your call. Now, if I have someone on the call, I have to close it because there's no guarantee that I'm going to get them back on the phone. So we literally teach this. We promote it. If you're friends with me on Facebook, which you're, you know, no worries either way, but if you are, you see, we celebrate it. We make it a big deal. Approximately, we close about 35 to 40% of our new business off one call. So, and again, always remember one of the objectives of one call is either to get them to buy or to get an objection or to get them to say no, and I'm never going to do it so that you're not wasting your time trying to follow up with someone that's never going to buy. These are all things that are a part of the process. Um, I'm going to go through some steps. I'm going to role play some things out. I'm, some things I'm going to go a little quicker. It's a great conversation for Q&A. So I know JP said there's a chat feature in the bottom. I, I will take every single question you have. I'd love to hear, you know, whatever is on your mind, please just th throw it out the way. Um, so let's start like step one, starting the conversation. I, I We all have different leads, internet lead, live transfer, role, the, you requote, when I, we know them all. One thing that we coach kind of is starting the conversation and, and having the assumptive language, which basically means from beginning to end, we're going to assume that you're going to buy. So just, you know, one thing we, we kind of say, you know, hello, this is Mark. I'm calling to work up some quotes for you. Hopefully we can get you a better deal or a better policy. We never mention price, but saying better deal gives them the feeling that at least it's part of the conversation. Because again, we're not, we're not going to do apples to apples. We're going to still sell in value. We're still going to do the right things. But I did say better policy. I know that sounds a little different. It's a little unusual. But then at the end, these things matter. So when we do go to close, which I'm not going to fast forward to, but when we do get to that closing conversation and they're like, oh, you're, you're a little bit more. Well, we set the expectation. We were going to have a policy conversation. We were going to talk about your liability needs. So again, it's just setting that up. Another big part, and this is, I know CWC has more than just Allstate agents, but whatever platform you use, Allstate, we use Hearsay. Um, I know other texting platforms. So we'll just call it texting platforms. This is also a great opportunity early on for me to go, and I'll just use Joseph as my customer for the moment here, my prospect. Be like, hey, Joseph, am I talking to you in your cell phone? And of course, 99 times 100, Joseph's going to say yes. Great. I'm going to send you a text. So if there's any, at any point we get disconnected, you have, we can easily text back and forth. If it's an all state agent, we mentioned, you know, what our opt-in requirements are like. And we mentioned that the reason we do that is once we get them opted in, there's some things at the end where we're going to close and some objections we can overcome. They're going to be a lot easier if I can text them. So we do it at the beginning. Don't wait till the end when you've given a price, get them at the beginning, because until you give the price, you're in charge. That's important to know. Okay, next one, my friend. JP is in charge of running the screens for me, as in I can't do two things at once. Um, rapport. I've actually done a, a webinar on this. If you have a chance, go to the CWC library, take a look at it. It's me, JP, and Donor about this. Uh, we spent 30 minutes on rapport. That's how important. Actually, it's an hour long, but 30 minutes I was talking rapport. I'm not going to spend 30 minutes talking rapport. 
But this is critical. You can't close somebody if they don't know you and trust you. You just can't. So you have to get to know them. And the acronym we use and the acronym we teach and the acronym I've taught the members, you know, is we use the word forward. Very complicated acronym. Time by your family, occupation. What do you and your wife do? Recreation. What do you do for fun? Dreams. Dreams are a little goofy, but dreams are kind of like, you know, like everybody in the Midwest, we travel because no, I'm in Indiana. Nobody visits us, but we go to Florida. We go to Texas. We, you know, some even go to Alabama. It's a little different. Not my thing, but you know, I respect it. But my point is, what are you going to do? What, what are your dreams? What do you plan on doing this summer? This is how you connect. And please, one thing I always, when I talk to my team, I talk to anyone else, rapport is not something you do for five minutes. And then we go do all the insurance stuff. Rapport is the entire phone call, the entire conversation. And all that you're really looking for, guys, one thing I talk about rapport, it's not a checklist. Me at the end be like, well, I found out Joseph has three kids, his wife, and, and he's a coach, and he likes to work out, and he's going to go to Marco this summer. Well, that's great. I technically went four for four on you, JP. I, I did get all four there. But to my point, that's not really conversation. That's almost like filling out a form. When you see something that matters to them, that you can connect with, that you can really dive in, and that's different every call. That's when you really, the really great people at this, the great sales reps are active listening. And it could be hearing, hearing something. Could, do you hear a dog in the background? You know, I know people that love their pets more than their kids. And I can speak, there are days I love my dog more than my kids. So don't feel bad if that's you. But my point is, is like, just active listen. Um, if somebody got a new job that they're excited about, maybe they're more excited to talk about that than their three kids. May, I can tell you right now, all that I do every night is kids soccer. Every weekend is kids soccer. If you want to talk 30 minutes about my kids soccer, I'm all in. Because that's really all I got going on. So my point is, is look for something that you can connect with them. Look for something that matters. And then whatever that is, enjoy the conversation. And as you do the liability, which we're going to get to in a minute, but as you do the other important questions, please, this is critical. Don't forget rapport. Don't be like, I did this, I'm done. And now I go do all the quoting stuff. Because the more you talk about insurance, the less you're connecting with the customer or at this point prospect. I think we got some, get some examples. Yeah, I wanted to chime in real yeah. quick, Mark. Y'all yep. wanted to plug the CWC scripts in the documents on the platform, documents and processes for agency staff is literally the very first two documents. We got the PDF format and the, and the word format. Make sure that you are utilizing the scripts, y'all. In this training today, Mark is talking about how they have utilized the CWC process and made it their own very successfully. But we literally spell it out for you. So, for example, here's a screenshot of our building report script, which is very similar to Mark's Ford top path, right? And it's all about having a conversation, not are you employed, right? No. Hey, what do you do for a living? Oh, that, that's great. What company? Oh, wow. Really great company. I love that. You know, what about your spouse? Do they work outside of the home? Right. Got any kiddos? Not do you have offspring, right? Don't be boring. Y'all talk to people like you're catching up with an old friend. But anyways, I wanted to plug the CWC scripts, the CWC sales process, really everything that you have. But what y'all are getting to say, see today is how Mark has taken this and just made it his own for his team. And I forgot to say that y'all are the kings and queens of the one CC, the one CC, the one call closed. Y'all, I hope you're taking notes. Mark, take it away. Thank you, my friend. Lead with liability. I, again, I mentioned it earlier. This is not a price-led conversation. We are not going apples to apples. I don't care. I tell my people all the time, don't ask what they pay. Because I can tell you, we can't change our price. We plug it in our system. It kicks out a number. That's our number. There's no like go to the manager and knock off 10%. It doesn't work that way in insurance. So we actually coach the entire time to never ask what price. What we do want to talk about is liability. Now, JP just plugged it. There is more on the CWC website for referencing liability than anywhere. There's talk paths, there's scripts, 
there's videos, there's an unbelievable library and we use it all. We, we basically use it all. How we do it a little different, it's not, and it's just how we word it, is it's all part of the process. We're customizing a policy. So just think about that. We're, we're basically letting, so we have competitors that say 15 minutes will save you 15%. That's not us. We're going for 30 to 45 minutes here because we're building something for you. And we're letting you, the consumer, decide who's, what you want, what you don't. But this is our opportunity to explain what liability is. We educate them. We make sure they understand. Um, we, make, we, we walk them through the whole process. This is also the time we're, we're basically, I know we're not allowed to use word advisors anymore, but basically, I, I used to talk to my team, we're the adults in the room. When you're talking to a competitor, they're not as smart as my sales reps. My sales reps are the adults in the room. They're having very intelligent conversations that's giving them credibility. Because again, at the end, I'm going to ask this person for their bank information. I'm going to ask this person for a payment that's hundreds of maybe thousands of dollars. And they met me 40 minutes ago. You better have some investment. You better get some buy-in. This is when you do it. If at this point you go, oh, you have 5,100, great. I will give you 5,100 as well. Don't try it. You're not, you're not closing them because you're basically not any different than an 800 number. So again, I'm not going to role play the liability conversation. There's a million great topics on the website. Customize your policy meet the needs. So we did the liability. We built out a policy. We've had the umbrella conversation. So please don't think those are skipped. This is kind of when we do something a little different. So one of our questions is, and this is an all state question. So I know if you're not, you may have, every company has their own bells and whistles. One thing we have is we call it our gold package. So right now is a great time for us to go, Joseph, would you like a policy that would give you accident forgiveness? Who wouldn't? Like, I, 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 yeah, yeah, I would. Okay, great. We'll, we'll include that on the policy. Joseph, would you also like a policy that has a decreasing deductible every year that you don't get an accident? So unlike your current company, when you drive safe, we're going to reward you. Does that sound good? It actually really does. I'm customizing it. I'm building Because, of course, their valid question would be like, does it cost more? It's a little bit more. But we, we find long term, it really has some benefits. Okay. And then last but not least, every time, and this is just goes for any insurance company, we quote everybody. We're like, hey, have you ever had a rock in your windshield? Do you ever need a new windshield? And they're like, yeah, I, or my friend has. Great. Did they have to pay money? Yeah. Would you like to not pay and have a zero comprehensive deductible? Yeah, actually, I would. Great. We'll put that in your policy as well. Now, I know everyone's different. Maybe your state doesn't do it. I, so I, I recognize that. But here in Indiana, that's what we do. And again, we have a theme going. We customize your liability. Now we've customized your coverages. You're building it, Joseph. This is your, I'm acting like Joseph's my customer the entire time. Makes it a little more real for me. Like Joseph's in charge. He's running the show. I'm advising. I'm just here to help and put something together that fits him and his wife's needs. So again, and again, the assumptive language throughout, which we're really going to get into in the next, next slide, my friend. Okay. If you guys write down one thing that I talk about and you ignore the rest, please don't, please listen to all of it. But if you just do one, this is where the rubber meets the road. We've been doing this for about four or five years. And by the way, we all have different discounts as far as percentages. Ignore my percentages because these are mine, but every state's a little different. But this is when we do the discount conversation and this is where we set up our close. This is the key. So these are all state discounts. I understand we all have different ones. So this is assumptive language 101. So this is when I said, Joseph, a couple more things. I'll say very simply, I want to, you know, is it okay with you that I, you know, ask you about some of the discounts so I can get you the most value in this policy? Of course, Joseph's going to say yes, but I want the buy-in. I want the back and forth. I want to connect with my guy. And I'm going to say, Joseph, we kind of have a little different discount, a little goofy discount here in Allstate. When we start the policy, Joseph, is it okay to take the payment today, but start the policy next Wednesday? Now, if you're watching that later, that's seven days. Now, I did not call the discount what Allstate calls it. I did not have insurance conversation. It's about it, but I did say, when we start the policy, when we, we're, getting, we're getting the buy-in. Joseph says, yeah, that sounds great. Fantastic, Joseph. Great. When we start the policy, when I take the payment today, Joseph, would you like to pay the entire six months? It's approximately a 10% discount here. Or would you rather me set you up on month to month? 
Joseph says month to month. That's great. We'll set that up for you. A couple more. W Joseph, when we take that first month's payment, would you like to use your bank information at all state? It's about a 10% discount. I'm actually, and uh, we can get that going today. Does that sound good for you? Yeah, that does. Great. Last one, Joseph. Uh, when we, you know, insurance companies, we have like a million different documents. Is it okay instead of me mailing you everything? Can I email you everything, including your cards? Does that work? It's about another 10% discount. Yeah, that's great. At no point, Joseph, has you heard the word easy pay, e policy, or I don't even know what early signing means. I don't know why we do it. I'm not saying get rid of it. I don't want, I, I'll keep it. That's, these are all state terms. Don't use them. I don't know what e policy means. Like, like, does that mean not everything is electronic? Can I talk to you? I don't know what that, that corporations come up with those things. We're human beings. We're not. So use your words. But the key words are to make it very simple for the customer to use the percentages, by the way. So your percentages in your state are different than mine. I understand that. Know your percentages because you want to say, when we start the policy, Joseph, is it OK if I take your payment today, but start it next Wednesday? It's approximately a 10% discount. Then I wait for Joseph's buy-in. Here's why this matters, and I'm going to get to a lot more of this in the close. When you go to close a customer, isn't it better to have one price? Have we ever closed a customer? And we're like, hey, Joseph, um, looks like with everything we did today, it can be $200 a month, or it can be $800 for six months. Okay, I'll, I'll do the monthly. Okay, great. I just need your bank information. Oh, I pay everything on my credit card. Okay, okay. Now that's going to be two fifteen seventy six, but I want the two hundred. Like how, that is not a great presentation. I want the two. I, I've heard customers say, "I want the 200 I'm actually. I by the way, please listen. I never mentioned multi policy because multi policy is not a discount, uh, which we're going to get in a little bit. We quote everything. So that's not even an option. Like you don't have the, like our bundle rates unbelievable because we're going to do that. So I don't mention multi-policy. Um, I don't mention driveways. Driveways a little more complicated. At the end, we do bring it up if it's necessary because driveways for a certain consumer, it's, not, it's a little more complicated. These four are available to almost every customer. Every customer. So again, the assumptive language when we start the policy. It matters, guys, so much more than you realize. And it also matters to say the number because psychologically, it's like, okay, I saved 10%. I saved another 10. I saved, like they're stacking the discounts in their head. It's why insurance companies show down a bill of all the money you saved and they itemize it. So it feels like they're saving you all kinds of money. Even though your rates went up 30%, like, look at all these savings. It's great. <laughs> your discounts went up. It's like, yeah, your rates went up 30%. <laughs> it's psychological, guys. So this is important. If you guys can master this, you will close more business. I promise you. Next one, my friend. Okay. I just mentioned it. I'm not going to say multi-policy discount. I never mention it. We never talk about it. Our line every single time. And this is how we get all, because we, we don't just walk and call out on home. We get it all. We get everything. Joseph, Joseph's got, Joseph's got a Harley. He's got a, 40 foot boat. I'm going to get it. The umbrella is a given because he's, we got him going there. We're going to get it. He's got a little moped for the weekends. I got it. We're going to get everything JP's got. Okay. And we do that very simply on the, on the, basically when I asked Joseph his address, he says one, two, three main street, most popular road in America. And I look at Joseph and I say very simply, excellent. One great thing about Allstate, when I put this auto quote together, it automatically includes a homeowner's quote. So that'd be great. We'll get that going for you. And then I move on because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not giving you any prices and collect with everything. And as we go through, we're going to dig, I'm going to find out because hopefully Joseph, when I asked him what he does for fun, he mentions his moped in the weekend, his motorcycle gets him to work. So again, quote everything. I mean, we, I think the biggest one call close we had, I think somebody had 12 items on one call. It was a lot. It was double digits. Please forgive me if I'm a little off, but so we're not just getting the auto and renters. We, that's not what we're here to do. We're here to get auto, home, boat, you name it. So again, don't go, don't break down a di multi policy discount because again, if you mention the multi policy discount, you're giving the customer an option to separate them. 
because discounts can be, you can choose not to pay in full and that's your right, but you do not have the right to do so in my world. I'm going to keep you on that straight path. Next one, my friend. It's closing time, baby. It's closing time. Okay. So let's circle back to the discount conversation. We'll tell you right now, if you're a staff listening on the call, I have not listened to all your calls. I promise you that I'm right here though, because I've been doing this a while. Agents, I promise you this happens. We're not asking for the business on every deal. I promise. Money back guarantee, even though I didn't charge anything for it. I promise because it's human nature. We don't ask for the close. Even like a really bad ask, which we've all had a bad close. We don't do it because we get scared. We get nervous. We don't know what to do. The advisor pro tells us 247.56. And so at that point I go, Joseph, it's 247.56. And then it, I didn't freeze. And it's the longest pause you've ever heard. The customer doesn't say anything. So we get nervous and what do we do? I can email you the quotes. I, if, if Allstate actually shut down email for a day and said we couldn't email quotes, I think our close rate would go up. Like, sorry, we don't close. We can't, we can't close today. So my point is when you do the discount conversation, right? I now know that if you remember, Joseph said, I can do the early signing. He said, I can put, you know, take, he said, he wants to pay monthly and he'll give me his bank information. Correct. As JP you agreed to all that. Correct. So now it's very simple on our end. I recap the policy because at this point, it's been about 15 minutes since we've had the liability conversation that he's forgotten. So that's when I say, JP, I'm really excited. I've got an amazing policy for you. I'm so glad we talked today. As I mentioned, we have actually almost quadrupled your liability co coverage that you currently have. You have about 5,100. We got you at 250, 500. So you and your wife are in so much better shape. I'm so glad we got that going for you today. As I mentioned, gosh forbid there's an accident. We're going to forgive that first one. We got that all built in. We got the zero comp. And so a couple other things. The homeowners... I, I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to get your mortgage company. I'm going to take care of all that. That's $1,752 a year. I'm going to get the, on the phone with Chase with at the end, and we're going to take care of all that. I got it. And the auto, you did say that you want to do monthly. I set it up monthly, so we're in great shape there. So it's going to be two seventy six fifty four. dollars Hey, Joseph, what bank do you bank at? I bank at J.P. Morgan Chase. Oh, great. I actually have the routing number in front of me. It's 0740000010. I just need to get your account number and I'm going to get that 274 taken out today. And as I mentioned, the policy is going to start next week. What's your account number, Joseph? He has two options. Give me the account number or give me a legit objection. I'm good with either one. I prefer the account number, but I'm good either way. And if all that I get there if all that I get there is an objection, now I have now we're now we're now we're playing. Now I'm ready. Like I, I'm because I didn't have to think. I was a salesperson there. I didn't have to think about what discounts Joseph wanted. He told me I had to think of one number. It's two seventy four fifty six or whatever number I said. <laughs> you get the idea. But advisor probably telling me right now. It's all to think about. So now Joseph's going to give me the price objection. I'm in. Joseph, hey, well, that's more than I'm paying. I, I understand. Honestly, Joseph, we're giving you four times as much coverage. I would be shocked if it was less. And then I'm going to recap the whole liability conversation while they're better protected. And then I'm going to go right back. So let's get you and your wife in good hands. And yes, we do say the cheesy line, good hands. It makes people laugh today. Get you protected. What's that account number? Gives me the spouse objection. I'm ready. Joseph, I understand. I run everything by my wife too. But let me ask you a question. We've got, and I do the liability count, and then I go right back to the close. So I'm going to hear whatever objection JP wants to give me. I'm going to acknowledge those objections, and I'm going to go right back to the close. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to get off the phone with JP. My faith, so if you remember earlier, I mentioned. So there's a ton of training on the website on CWC around spouse objections, around price objections. There's, there's more scripts than I know what to do. Print them out, read them, they're great. One of them is I need to look, I need to think about it. I need to look at it. 
I mentioned earlier that Joe, JP got, gave me permission to text. I got a cell phone number right here. Great. I understand you look right. Do you, you still have your phone in front of you? Yes, I do. Great. I'm going to text you over this quote. Take a look at it and we'll talk about it together because it's important to me that you understand all the coverage we explained. But I, this is what I do as an insurance agent. So I want to look at it with you. I just sent it over. Let me know when you have it. We can talk about it. I mean, at that point, I guess he can hang up on me, but JP's a nice guy. He's not going to hang up on me. We talked about his wife and kids. We connected, okay? Here's one other thing we do. You want to keep them on the phone because if I try to call JP back, he's, JP, you're coaching all day today. I know that. I know tonight he's going to do something with his kids because I see him on Facebook this morning. He probably burned 2,000 calories. Doing. He's not going to answer my call. Like I text JP, there's windows. I'm going to keep him on the phone. I'm going to keep him on the phone. This is like, this is when sometimes we say, hey, if, and if we, we've tried the objections, you know what? Let me three-way in my, the agent or manager and let's talk about, see what options we have and just get another person on the phone, get somebody else in there. Like I said, you want to keep them on the phone and you want to keep the rapport going. We've had some conversations that go over an hour. The longest one we had, there was, oh, it was like eight items on a Saturday. My guy, Needed a daughter's driver's license. So we three-way called her. Needed, I think, a mom's driver's license. Three-way called her. We never got the phone. Just kept, It was over an hour. And it was like an eight-item deal on a Saturday. Because in my office, by the way, if they hang up and call back with everything you need in five minutes, it's not a one-call close. We, we're strict. It's not. That's two calls. One call. Which leads it to agents. Have fun with it. Like, do everything we just did. But we have, like... We have inner office chat, one CC every time. We have a chain. We, I mean, we we go nuts. We make it a really good time. Friends of me on Facebook, you can see it every Friday. We do we do different games. You do what works for your agency. You don't have to do what I do, but you need to make it fun, and you need to get it in your business. Because one great thing, what if I told Joseph our price, and he's like, I don't want to do it. Then he's gonna tell me no. And then I don't call him nine more times. I say, great, can I call you in six months? Because we don't close every deal. But it, it at least gives me the opportunity to know where I stand. Because we had that customer that you thought, man, I thought I had a really good chance. And they never answered the call again. You never had a chance. They just liked you. And said, so, you know, I've done that to sales reps. Yeah, yeah, give me a call. I'm never answering his call. I'm never, I'm just, I don't want to hurt his feelings. I want you to tell me I'm not buying Allstate today because then I don't have to spend the next four weeks calling you because that's what my CRM tells me to do. I can move on to the next guy. So I hopefully we have some good questions. I've talked for like 25 straight minutes, which is a long time. I need to drink water, but I, I'd love questions. But whatever you guys got, I'm all in. I, we got good 30 minutes left. Absolutely. So everyone, if you can use the Q&A button on the uh, the Zoom control panel, hit the Q&A. It's easier to moderate questions that way. And I have several questions already lined up, but I want to ask you something, Mark. Yes, sir. A lot of what you just said throughout the whole process, and I hope everybody was taking notes, is almost identical to the things that we've been teaching at CWC for years, okay. not trying to take credit, but would you just share for a few minutes about how maybe working with CWC over the past five, six years has been, has it helped you evolve? Did you guys always do it this way when you started back in 2009? Can you just share on CWC? Yeah, stuff? yeah. I said, no, no. I mean, we've always been really good at sales, but we just used to sell on price. You come in, we match, we kick you out. And, and hey, you can do that and you can be pretty good. I was able to do a couple hundred items off that, but like, you're going to get to a certain level that you just can't pass. Like, and to my point, we got to really change the game. And again, if you're, if you're just pushing price, you not only have to be less, you got to be like 20 or 30 bucks a month less because no one's going to switch for say five bucks a month. So just having the liability conversation is a game changer. Having, and also I, Let's get all sweet and sensitive for a minute. It's the right thing to do. Yeah. Like it's the right thing to do. So now you're actually like, we're, I mean, we used to sell the 5,100 policies to guys that had a $500,000 house. That's insane. And by the way, we did it. We, everyone in 2009 did it. 
And then we realized it's not the right way to do things. So now we're actually making more money, selling more stuff, and we're doing it the right way. That's kind of, it's kind of, I think the kids call it win-win. So absolutely. Yep. I'll ask one more question, then I'll get yep. to the questions that people have asked. Yep. You guys do a lot of leads, right? Yep. Differently, like what do y'all do? Right. Internet leads, life transfers. What are you doing? We do live trans. So everything's I don't do mailers. I've never had any luck with mailers. We do live transfers, requotes, win backs. We really don't do and and to be honest, this process is irrelevant what it is. Um, it, it it really doesn't matter. I mean, the intro is a little different, you know. The requote, there's a plenty of scripts on CWC that you know go through a requote. The win back has the same thing. And then you're right into the deal. Like you're right into the flow. So the intro, you tweak a little bit. Um, you got to remember if it's a lead, if it's brand new to you, that's where the intro matters so much. Where I did at the beginning, where I said, this is Mark from Allstate. I say right off the bat from Allstate. I don't say Mercer Insurance. I say Allstate. I want to know where we're, I can't, I can't put you anywhere else. We're going to Allstate here. And uh, you know, our goal is to get you a better policy, better deal. Like, because you're brand new to me. When, we, when you have a lead right now, their mindset on a lead is I'm here to save money. And we're not going to tell them that's wrong. We're going to, we're going to get in there later. But right now, okay, you stay there, JP. We're going to show you what we do a little different. But right off the bat, I just want you excited and relaxed. Well, I love about what you just said is it doesn't matter the lead source. Your team understands that, you know, like in, in internet leads or life transfers, whatever, you go into every conversation expecting them to buy. We just yep. got to work out the details, right? Yep. And y'all, we can't just treat paid lead sources as direct shoppers who will only care about price. Of course, most people make it seem like price is all they care about yep. because that's all they've ever known. But ladies and gentlemen, as you start to have this conversation, as you start to start asking them questions that they've never been asked before, building the policy with them, customizing the policy. I love how Mark talks about the different coverages without using insurance terms. You know what, Mark, let me ask you something, man. If a rock hits your windshield, you need a windshield replaced. Would you be cool if we just paid for it all? Or would you want to maybe pay like $100 out of pocket, save a little on your premium, or we can just cover it all? He didn't just say, I'm going to give you a zero comp deductible, right? We want to build the policy with them. And y'all, they might just not be expecting you. They might be expecting you to be just like every other insurance order taker they've ever talked to. Okay. So let's get to some of these questions. Um, Amy asked, when do you ask for the email address? I personally never ask for it until the close because I don't want to open the door for them to ask me to email it to them. Is that a good practice or not? No, I love it. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, I didn't really role play that in the conversation. I never asked. Now, Amy, I got your payment info. I got to send your docs over. You've already signed up. We're married now for the next six months. Then it's email time. I think that's great. Listen, we tell people about email. They don't ask for it. We bring it in the conversation. I hate, nobody reads emails. I don't read any, I, I get so many darn emails. I, I don't really have them. So my goal is to keep that off the conversation. I'm going to mention it for the discount, but I mention it when we sign you up. So like, I didn't mention it when we email you quotes. So hundred percent, we, at the very end, I got your bank information, Amy. We're cust your customer. You're in good hands. I need to send you a, Hey, I, I need to email you everything we did today. What's your email at the end? That's beautiful. I think it's awesome too. Now, what I love is at the beginning of the call, towards the beginning of the call, that you're getting them to opt into texting. Yep. I think that is brilliant. Y'all, like Mark said, it's going to be harder and harder and harder to talk to people. Right mm -hmm. now, the iPhone has silence, unknown callers, Android nerds out there. Android's had that for six years. All right, shut it. Right. iPhone now has. Silence unknown callers. Yep. You know, your carriers are likely bringing down the hammer hard on TCPA compliance, right? Which is important. We got to make sure we do it right. So Mark's tip about getting the text opt-in initially, in case we get disconnected, or if you want to tap me with any questions, you can text me anytime you want. That is brilliant. Yep. Y'all, people will text you for an hour, but they won't answer a four-minute phone call, mm -hmm. right? So that was beautiful advice to get the texting off to him right away. I love that, Mark. Um, let's see here. Heather, when do you go through the discount questions? Right before the coverage conversation or is it towards the end? 
the do, so, so if you think about it, we're going to do, we're going to have a liability conversation. We're going to liability umbrella, that whole kit and caboodle. We're going to do that. And then it's time to get into it. You know, think about it. it's time to get an advisor pro. That's what we do at all state, whatever your quoting system, it's time to do time to put the bin number in and all the labor stuff right before that. It's good time to go. Hey, and have the discount conversation. One last question, because then you're telling me things half the time in our system, I can see the cars, you know, like they don't know that it's going to take me that quick. But again, early on the conversation, we're going to have it out of the way. Because again, I have it. And then 20 minutes later, I'm recapping it at a close. You don't, if you put it at the end, guys, which is what all state and every other company, like they've taught us to do that. Because if you look at a quote, it's like numbers and then discounts. Like that's how in our system, I can't speak for every company. So like in our mind, we want to give it the numbers and then be like, but we can do this or we can do this or we can do this or we can do this. The more options you give someone at the end when it comes to price, the more likely you are opening up to let me think about it. Those are the worst words in sales because that's not an objection. That's not an objection. That's I don't know. So I want an objection or the digits. Uh, ben sent in a chat, and then I have a bunch of other Q&As. Um, hi, Mark. Thanks for doing this uh, for DriveWise. And by the way, we do work with many carriers, and you likely have a telematics option. I don't yep. know what they might be called at Farmers or State Farm, but like based on how someone drives, they can get better rates or discounts or rebates, right? When do you bring that up? You said it was only for certain customers. What would you say about customers. that? We're going to try to close them without the driveways discount. I'm just being honest because honestly, it's, I can just speak for my company. We're getting better at it. It's still a pain in the butt sometimes to do. Some customers don't like it. So we're going to try to close them. Um, it, but it also gives us the Hail Mary that, hey, I like triple the coverage, but like, is there any other options? Well, we've got this other option. And then we go into it. You know, I'm not chomping your coverage to get you. I'm not going to be like, cool, we'll do state minimum, sign up. Like, no. But I can throw driveways on there. I can have that conversation. But it's at the end. And, and again, we're it's not that we're saying, oh, JP is the right customer, but Wiggins, nope, not him. It's just we're going to almost keep it at the end to when we need to bring it out. And let's be honest, I can just speak for the comp my company. Allstate's going to send 2,047 emails within the first week about driveways. Yeah, so they, they want to add it on. They can go nuts. I know some agencies use their telematics program, their safe driving type programs or driver, you know, um, methods program, whatever you call it in your area as a retention play. Yep. So That's in six months, play. there yep. might be an increase. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mark, I get it. But, you know, the cost of everything is going up right now. The cost of fixing cars and parts and labor and gosh, these attorneys, you look up, drive around, look up and see all those attorneys billboards, all this money going out to pay them. So there had to be a rate adjustment. But, you know, what? we have this new thing. We got this new thing. Would you like it if I gave you some free money back just for driving? Boom. And then you can go into talking about your telematics program. Okay. Um, Aaron asked a question that I think is a, a, probably a lot of people are wondering, how do you and your team deal with people that are really direct shoppers? They only care about price, no matter what you say. They're, they're full of crap. Like, that's not true. Like for, I'm sure there's some cool go to like the general, like there's the general. I'm sorry if anyone's a general agent, I don't think you have general questions <laughs> to see, but like. Go somewhere else. I'm fine with that. But everyone says they are a, a price shopper. If that was the case, every renewal, you should call 10 companies, whoever you have, and you will find one that's cheaper. That's just the nature of insurance. And then every six months you do that. And every they don't. People don't. It, it's a misconception. Now, how much they're willing to pay is a conversation. There is maybe a limit with some people. We've had people that are 150 bucks more a month and they come over with us. And it's not a unicorn. Like, it's not like my state has special rates. So I, if we lose the deal, it's like, great. That's why our close rate is 12 to 14%. Like, it is what it is. I, like, I don't really focus on it. We like, because if we start focusing on that, guys, we're not focused on the right things. So it's a valid question. I'm not dismissing the question, but we almost just like, it is what it is. If that guy's like, I want you to have the exact same price, we're not doing it. And along those lines, we have a question from 
Jerclara, I hope I'm pronouncing that name right, Jerclara. If we're a thousand dollars more on price and the coverages are pretty much identical, how would you handle that objection? But listen to what she said. And our coverages are pretty much identical. They're not identical. I, I, I if you do a hundred quotes this month, hundred different households, how many have two fifty five hundred? Hardly one, two percent. Yeah. I'm an insurance agent. I didn't have two fifty five hundred like five years ago, and I was like, "Hey, idiot!" Like you might want to raise that. So they're not identical. And I have two fifty five hundred. You're a thousand bucks more a month. Okay, sounds like you're in a great place. Can I call you in six months? And I'm moving on. That's why, like, when people are like, "Oh, we're not having success." Then my next question is not really what we're talking about. So well, how many people are you quoting? Well, I quoted like one household a day. Well, you're probably in bad shape. Like you, the, that's where activity. Like you want to take a bunch of swings because your close rate's going to be 12 or 14%. If you're really good at this, if you're really good at this, it's 12 or 14%. I don't care what state it is. That's, the, that's it. So that's when I'm going to say, take more swings. Quote 10 households a day, you'll close one. I like it. And y'all just remember what we say all the time. Every note, y'all send me a chat right now. I'll be curious who knows the right answer. Send me a chat. Get ready. Hold on. And many of y'all that join our live trainings know what I'm about to ask. Every no gets you closer to what? Yep. Gotta love most of y'all. Some of y'all like, nope, you haven't been on a training. Every no gets you closer to another no, another no, another no, then a yes. Then a yes. Y'all, some will, some won't. So what next, right? Don't sweat over it. Let me ask you, Mark, do you guys have a hundred percent close rate? I bet percent close rate. Like what's your close rate? My close rate's 9%. I bet 9%. We, have low, we have one of the lowest close rates in the state. Why? Because we take a lot. We swing the bat a lot. And if you, you, you know, you miss, we miss more shots. We, 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 have, we, we sell less people, you know, we have more fails than anyone. But the sales that you make have way more policies per household. Many of them are done in one call. Did you say 30%? What did you estimate? 20%? I'm going to say 35 to 40. Wow. Yeah. That's solid. I mean, we'll do, uh, we'll do, uh, if you watch the baseball, we'll do a puck drop for one call closes. And there are weeks that's every household and I'll have 12 to 14 in a week. Nice. Not common. It can be expensive if they, that puck falls wrong. So we hope, you know, I root again, I'm the house. I root against it. So, yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, one of the top producing agents in the country doesn't have a hundred percent close rate, not an 80% close rate, not a 50% close rate. Y'all, if you come to me bragging about your high close rate, I'll tell you, you're not quoting enough. No. Y'all get more no's. And as you get more no's, you'll get closer to those yeses. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, a no today is not a no forever, right? There's a lot of shaking up in the industry this year with rates increasing dramatically. Some carriers doing non-renewals are pulling out of states. Somebody might not have been interested six months ago and you call them up today and like, yeah, man, I got a minute, right? Because they're interested today. There's going to be even more shaking up in the industry. Let's take advantage. Okay, let's fly through some questions. Yep. Jason asked, what about cross-selling and not mentioning multiple policy discount? I imagine that would be an exception. I'm not sure what he means there. I You're just saying that you don't bring up the discount. I think what he means, if I'm calling an auto, no home, I'm guessing if I'm wrong. Ah, okay. What about cross-selling? Yes. Let's go with that. Yeah. But again, that is going to be part of the intro conversation. You know, if you look at the script, that's part of the intro, but I'm not like, it, but it's calling your current customer. You know, we, you know, we're noticing what you're missing one of our biggest discounts, but then I'm moving on. Like it's, an, it, and if, if it's an auto pile, let's say it's a home. Hey, you're missing one of our biggest discounts. It's a multi-policy. Really want to have everything on one roof. I've got, great. I've got all your information, and then I go right into the quote, and then I'm never mentioning it again. I'm, I didn't. Even, I don't even mention the percent. It's irrelevant. Like if it is it twenty percent or twenty six percent. Yeah, you're just gonna like, quote it. It's gonna quote it. Like I don't. There's no question. Like if you're gonna, would you let me quote it at twenty percent, or would you let me quote it at thirty percent? Like you're just gonna quote it. Right. And y'all, did you hear what he said? What he teaches his team, what his team does that works. The neat thing about us is when we're doing an auto quote for you, my system has already generated the home quote. So I just need to confirm a few details real quick to finalize that as well. That is very assumptive. Y'all, the entire process, you're in control. The ball is in your court. You're in control. You're taking them through the process. The ball is never in their court. Um, let's see here. Christian, 
or Kristan, actually Kristan asked, how do you handle, I'm driving and can't get my to, to my account number right now. What do, what do you do if they can't get their account number? Can you pull over? I mean, like you just pull have over. to, I don't like, I don't want to, like you just have, it's an excuse guys. They're on, the, like if you're on the phone with somebody for 45 minutes, when did they start driving? Like, like you just have to have fun with it. Oh, I understand. I want you to be safe. Hey, is there any way you can pull over? Is there any way, you know, just have conversation. And again, if you don't, you don't. But the key is most people at that point, just stop. If that makes sense, they say, okay, no problem. When can I call you later? And they're done. What we do is we don't stop. We're going to at least, like, we're not jerks about it. We're funny. Like, hey, is there any way, like, are you close to home? I'm happy to wait. We can talk more about anything. I really want to get you signed up today. So the next time you drive, you're covered as, as you, you know, have fun with it. The key is continuing to talk. It's not, you have to expect objections. And when they come, it's almost like a boxer. Just move out of the way and counter punch. Have fun with it. And along these same lines, Daniel asked earlier on, how do you deal with it when you catch somebody who's at work or, and they, or they make it really clear? They don't got a lot of time. They don't have 30 to 45 minutes. You want to have the conversation with them, but you don't want to lose the chance to talk to them again. So if you can tell Mark, someone literally doesn't have time, how do you and your team handle that? So Joseph, if I called you, if you don't have time, would you answer the phone? Probably not. Okay. So if you answer the phone, you have time. Got like, a minute at least. It's a, it's a B. I, I would say, guys, it's a BS objection. They have time. They have, like, if you call, pick up your phone and call JP right now. He's not going to, don't, don't do, don't, don't blow up his phone. <laughs> he's not going to answer the call. He's not going to pick up the phone. But if he does, he's got time. So the key is whenever I hear the time, it's like, no problem, JP. This will take a couple more minutes. And if you're giving him value, he's going to find more time. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, I hate when people say they're busy. I'm too busy. We're never busy enough for things we value. If you're on the other end providing the customer value, they're going to stay on the phone. If you are boring and you're talking insurance and you're saying all the unexciting things and you're not connecting with them, you're right. 15 minutes will save you 15%. If we're that, you better get you better be really quick with AP. You better fly or whatever company you use. We're not that guy. So oh, I know you're really busy. I'll do some quoting stuff. And I'm like, hey, why am I plugging this in? You mentioned you had three kids. Boy, girl, bro, what, what, what's the what what do you have? I have a boy and a girl myself. I'm just gonna do my job. I'm in charge. The worst thing they can do is hang up the phone on me. Big deal. That's why I quote a lot of people every day because they were never going to buy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, this might not necessarily apply to you and your team, but Asia had a question. I imagine we have others in Florida and California and other states, independent carriers. Um, we have to broker homes at our agency, and it's kind of hard to do that on the same call. What advice would you give to someone that has to broker, look at different options, different systems? What advice would you give to Asia and others like her? So I coach, I have agents I coach in Florida. So I, I, I don't have to deal with the guys. So please don't act like I'm the expert. Of, of, I, I've never had a broker home policy except for some random stuff. So, but again, I'm going to try to keep them on the phone and I'm going to navigate it. I'm going to do the best I can. Like, I'm going to at least, if I have worst case scenario, I'm going to get the auto and I'm going to call back and say, I got the auto in place. I'm going to call you back with the best homeowner's policy that fits what you tell me you need. If that's what you have to do, great. But I already got payment on the auto. I'm going to try. I think the problem with a lot of, when we, when, a lot of these are questions when these objections come up, we then quit trying. You have to keep trying. I, it's cool to fail. It, it's a, and I'm not saying this in a mean way, but like just to give up then. It's like, oh, it's in Florida. It's like the old, like, you don't understand our rates are really high here. No, they're the same. Just try. Like, we just have to have the mindset that we're going to try. And it's amazing what you can do is if every single time you try it, and you're going to fail 90% of the time, and that's okay. But you're going to get a lot more business than you used to get. Yeah, I love your idea of or your feedback of just closing the auto first and then saying, y'all, you can broker. 
that's awesome. You got options, right? It's nice. Like we'd love to have some extra options, yeah. right? That you could then say, you know what, Mark, now we've got your car insurance taken care of. I'm just about done with your home insurance, but we got a few different carriers to work with them. I find you the best plan that meets your needs and give you a shout back here in an hour or two hours, whatever. It's like set a time for callback, close the cars, close yep. something. Y'all, you are not paid to quote. Nope. You are paid to close. Yep. Right. We talked about that last week was the assumptive close training. I think you are paid to close, seal the deal, get the digits, get the digits, right? Get that payment info. A couple more quick questions here. Uh, let's see here. Valerie asked a question that if you know the answer to Mark, you'd be a billionaire. My staff is complaining that people aren't answering the phone. What is your technique to get people to answer the phone initially to get that one call closed? How do we get people on the phone? Okay. You, so Valerie, I hope, is it Valerie? Yes. If your staff's on the call, I apologize. Call more people, work harder. Like I don't, I, 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 I like, there's no solution to work. Like when I coach agents, it's amazing. When we look at activity, it goes, there's a ton of conferences about activity, tons of information on CDC activity. Call more. If you call a hundred people and one answers and you need to get five, make 500 calls. Like you just have to work harder. We have eight hours in a day. Like you have to have the mindset that if your expectation is five quarter households a day, I don't care how many dials it costs. You, you have eight hours, we got to get five. So you have to eliminate that. And you just have to say, well, call more people, 10 exit, little Grant Cardone on the call, 10 exit. Like it is harder. It's, and it's not going to get easier. Like we're not get, like, so there's no magic. I, Steve Jobs, rest in peace, Apple, it's making it harder. I don't know the Android, but the, it's it, it's going to get harder. And we can't just, I remember we can just, I remember we didn't know the issues with texting. We just buy our texts off all day. It was like the wild, wild west. I didn't know that was wrong. Now I know it's wrong. We don't do that. So we have, we work harder now than we ever have, but we have bills to pay. And you know what? I'd rather do this than anything else. So Absolutely. just work harder. Yeah, and y'all leverage all forms of communication, email. If we can get them opting into texting, texting. Handwritten cards are powerful. If it's a really good prospect that you've had a conversation with and they're kind of ghosting you, handwritten cards. We teach all of this in the platform. We got to leverage all the different forms of communication. Email, texting compliantly, handwritten cards with that phone. Amy, I mean, uh, no, who said it? Amy Glidewell chatted. You know, how do we get people to answer the phone? Pick up the phone is what she said. I say that all the time. If there's one thing I could tattoo on my forehead, it'd be roll tight. Nope, nope. I mean, I'm sorry, Mark. I mean, said it. it would be pick up the phone. Pick up the phone, y'all. More activity, like Mark said. More activity and leverage all those forms of communication. A couple more quick questions, man. We got a few minutes. Yep. Evan, how do you work with people that are truly, truly on a fixed income where they genuinely can't make a certain price work? They I love it. I love fixed income. You know, the only person not on a fixed income is a salesperson. No they person. have a different commission. Like if you make 20 bucks an hour, your income is fixed at 20 bucks an hour times 40 hours a week. We're all on a fixed income. So close it. I, I, I don't mean to make this simple, but guys, a lot of these questions are objections. And I'm sitting here going, I don't, we don't have an 80% close rate. I told you we're like nine to maybe 11%. And we're going to do the best we can and we're going to navigate those conversations. And if we're at 500 a month and the customer's at 60 and they literally are on social security and that's all they have, they're not going to be our customer. And guess what? That's okay because then they're not going to be on my, this sounds mean, I apologize. They're not going to be on my cancel list in a year because they're having a hard time paying their bills. Like it's okay. We're not a fit for everyone. I'm not trying to sign up everyone. So just move on, make some more calls. Awesome. A um, couple more questions here. Let's see here. All right, Andrea, if you don't want call close, how often do y'all follow up and keep trying to close them? Um, till they say no. I mean, we're. I mean, we you know we use our you know, we use our CRM and, and basically we are until he says no or she says no. We're gonna keep calling and keep calling and keep calling. So there's no real, I guess at the end, we're going to get to a certain point that we want them to either say yes or no. 
So, but again, that's why texting is so important. That's why hearsay often is so important because if I don't get the deal, which by the way, guys, that's 60% of the deals. I told you maybe 65, then I'm going to set up a time that we're going to connect because you got to talk to your wife and I didn't overcome it. That's okay. But then when you tell me JP to call you today at five and I do, and you don't answer, oh, guess what, JP? I'm going to text you, buddy. I've texted JP. He's never ignored my text. He always texts back. Hey, and you know, and it, hey, I, you told me to call five. I understand if you're busy. Is there a better time? I, I, unless he's one of those crazy people that literally have like 800 text icons, those people scare me to death. How do you not look at them? I don't know. He's going to reply back. So use the, everything we have in place. But again, mm -hmm. we're going to try and, I mean, you know, a certain point, I guess we'll probably give up, but God, we don't have a time and place. We're going to keep trying, it, especially if he's continually talking to me. Absolutely. Aaron asked a really good question just now about building rapport. How do you get someone who seems like they're a brick wall to oh, open up to you some rapport with you? It's fun. Make it a game. So like, this is a long story and I'm going to try to make like a 45 second story or a minute. I had a call I listened to and that it was a 12. I look for calls that are 15 minutes or less. Cause that means we didn't do a great call. That just being, that's my expectation. So we'll, we'll coach those. And she's like, man, you know, they, they just, it was yes, no, yes, no. Yeah. It was just, and I heard him. He was that guy. He was, I, I can picture him. I never met him. I know what he looks like, but at one point he's like, yeah. Been a mechanic for 30 years, own my own shop. He's like, she's like, oh, that's great. And she moved on. And I'm sitting there. You've owned a mechanic shop for 30 years. That's physical. That's tough. It's not like, I mean, it's not like he has seven mechanic shops all over the country. He's a millionaire. He's in a small town. He knows everybody. It's a passion. You, I'd have spent two hours. I would have been like, what got you into that? But she didn't actively listen. There's something on most calls that they will give you. Just keep asking. And again, if anyone knows me, I'm the least handy guy in the world. I couldn't fix any time, anything in the world. So I'd be like, he tell me something. I'd be like, well, I don't know what that means. When you said you got into rebuilding carburetors, like how do you rebuild a carburetor? I'm, I'm an insurance guy. And I really, I don't even know what that means. I just said a word. And like, I'm going to ask. Because honestly, I like to get to know people. I like to learn. So I'm going to keep asking and sooner or later, I'm going to hope I get something. Hey guys, sometimes we won't, it's okay, but I'm going to keep firing. You got to keep shooting your shot. I love it. Now, as we're getting ready to wrap up this call, y'all, I want to thank you so much for taking time to be on this call with Mark. I hope that you took a bunch of notes. It's all about being assumptive. It's all about being assertive. Now you might be out there as an agency owner and say, you know what? I'd love for Mark to work with my team. He only has a few openings. CraigWigginsCoaching.com slash Mark. You can check out his elite level program where he can work directly with you and or your team twice a month. So I just wanted to plug that for Mark real quick. The feedback that we get on the agencies that you work with, Mark, is amazing. I love it. We, we, do, we do great stuff. I, I, if you guys are interested, like I said, we, we've, we've had some, a ton of success. It's been a ton yeah. of fun. Well, are there any final thoughts or words from you to take us out, Mark, for the team? I mean, just real I mean, guys, this isn't something that, you know, you just roll out to your, it's like anything else we've done in this business. You can't just roll it out and it work. I mean, I'm going to be honest. My team's getting bad in the discount conversation. I don't think it's great. So tomorrow at 830, guess what we're going to do? We're going to role play it. And I've been coaching this for three, I coach agents on it. So I guess my point here, guys, is it has to be something that you're investing. We listen to calls every single week. We coach every single week and it's all around this. And again, you have to invest the time. And if you're a staff and you're being coached, you have to try it. Not once. Like when I coach staff all the time, I'm like the more I've gotten actually better at these discount conversations because I coach agents and I'm doing it so much. I'm like, I sound really good. I might be able to do hundred dollars a month right now. So my point is, I've gotten better at it because I do it all the time. I can have a rapport conversation, no problem. I go to CWC stage, whatever JP wants to throw at me, I could do because I do it every day. So my point is, guys, just, you know, work, put in the work. If you're an agent, invest in your team. And if you're staff, if you've got an agent investing in you, invest back because you're, you're very, it's very unique situation. 
That's awesome. Well, Mark, well done, man. I think this was a fantastic class. Y'all, I will get the recording up on the platform in the CWC live events and live training course section um, within two or three hours. So if you have team members that missed, they can watch it tomorrow or Friday. I hope that you all took away a lot of great things. I personally am going to use this presentation with the agencies that I'm working with, uh, but I'll give you credit. It's got your name all over it, Mark. Sure. I'll give you credit. Perfect. What's beautiful is, is it aligns very closely with what we've been teaching for years. You've just made it even stronger for you and for your team. It's awesome. But ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get back to work, y'all. We got policies to write and people to protect. Get off this call, pick up that phone, call somebody, quote somebody, close somebody. Get them the covers that they deserve with you and your agency today. Thanks so much, everybody. Now, back to work. Let's go.